A commitment with bright source energy and Bechtel with the Building Trades Council will ensure that the craft workers on the project will be earning very substantial wages and benefits. Those wages uh, on those weekly paychecks now will be recirculated throughout the community. It's been estimated that those dollars will transform themselves seven times over when spent within the local community. If you move 600 workers off of unemployment and put them into paying positions, they're going to go back out and start buying cars. They're going to start supporting their local barber shops. They're going to start buying appliances. All the purchases they have deferred over these three years of this severe recession and construction. Well, I think Bright Source is a phenomenal partner. One, because it cares about producing a project like what they have on the books right now, and because they care about the world they live in. And when you make projects that take humans into consideration in our future, that, to me, makes a great community partner. The Mojave Desert is one of the most unique solar areas anywhere on the entire planet. It's got world-class sun, over 335 days a year of direct, intense sunlight, and we would be able to produce a large amount of California's, in fact, a large amount of the country's power from a very, very small part of, this, of the Mojave. It's a very exciting project to be involved with, and we're looking forward to doing as much as we can over the decades to come with the community, uh, as well as the resources in this wonderful area to build some of the most reliable projects that you could build anywhere in the world. When we looked at the right way to deliver reliable, renewable power to uh, the consumers inside California over time, it always comes down to uh, some fundamentals. One is land use. Uh, solar uses about one-thirtieth the land of renewable power even from biofuels, one-fourth the amount of land from wind, and, a lot and solar thermal actually uses less land than the land from photovoltaics. So from a land use perspective, that's very important to think about, and those attributes of using as little land as possible in the most efficient way as possible are absolutely critical. And from a water perspective, we use dry cooling, which avoids the use of water to condense the steam at the end of the cycle. Uh, that uses about 4 to 5 percent of the water of a comparable uh, wet-cooled technology. Water in the desert is an absolutely fundamental issue, and it's one of the most important issues that we're going to deal with over not only our lifetimes, but our children's lifetimes. If I look at the scale that's required to deliver reliable carbon-free power over the next 40 years to have any chance at meeting our climate change goals, we have to build, in the United States alone, close to 2,000 power plants, each the size of a coal or nuclear facility, between now and 2050. That's the equivalent of every single week we're building the equivalent of a coal or a nuclear plant that needs to be carbon-free or renewable. In order to get there, we have to make sure we address this at a size and scale that is meaningful and can actually make a difference. To put that in perspective, last year, in the entire year, we built less than half of that from a solar perspective in the entire country. So when BrightSource looks at the, the way to design uh, solar facilities in an environmentally responsible manner, we always consider the land, the water, and the air. And you need to think through those issues in a holistic manner and how they integrate in with the natural environment around them and do them in a proper environmentally responsible manner.